understand the message for today. The enemy will always attack where there's no armor. Now, they talk about the full armor of God. That's Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. There are six pieces of armor. Put on the full armor of God is verse 11. For his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armored soldier, so that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes of the and the strategies and the deceits of the devil. This is the Amplified Version. So we got to understand that, you know, you have to put on six pieces of armor. So especially like when you wake up in the morning, you know, that's the that's the best time to, to get dressed. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes, you know, we don't want to put on our armor, you know. But you understand that, you know, even in this movie, The Black Panther, you know what I'm saying? He was attacked where he was weakest. And that's what the enemy likes to do. The enemy will always attack the weakest part, you know, uh, where there's a crack in the armor or where you're not wearing your armor and everything like that. You know? <laughs> and uh, this is uh, CV verse 12. It says, we are not fighting against humans. We are fighting against forces and authorities, <laughs> against rulers of the darkness and powers of the spiritual world. You know, I tell people all the time, don't get mad at the person, get mad at the demon controlling the person. And also, too, a person can be in their flesh, you know, saying, but what we want to do is, you know, we want to get mad at the person. So just like in this movie right here, you know, uh, Killmonger was actually, you know, fighting the dude because he was mad at what happened to his dad because he didn't understand the whole story. But yet he got some of the facts. And, you know, those were those were true facts, you know, saying. But as you see at the end, you know, like I explained that, you know, when. We, you know, when he realized the truth, you know, saying we're not supposed to be fighting each other. Those people that, um, you know, that uh, we encountered that uh, persecuted us or talk about us or lie on us or whatever like that, we're supposed to pray for them. Galatians 5 and 17, it says the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite. This is NLT of what the script, the spirit wants and the spirit gives us the desires are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not, you're not free to carry out your own, your, you know, carry out your own good intentions. Cause people can have good intentions. And sometimes, you know, because, um, you know, they're, they're angry and they stay angry. They have all this bitterness inside of them. It just comes out and they, they really want to do good. They just don't know how that's why, you know, uh, hurt people, hurt people, you know what I'm saying? That's why sometimes you got to understand when you're talking to a person or when you're talking to the demon that's actually controlling the person, you know, because people really just don't understand. Sometimes, you know, we think they do, but they don't, you know what I'm saying? And yes, there's sometimes people know what they're doing, but they don't know all the consequences and effects of, of what's going to happen. But this is why I say, you know, uh, you know, one of the tricks of the enemy is to get us to, you know, try to, tr you know, try to live this life by ourselves and not have like, that's why I says we're brothers and sisters in Christ, because we're supposed to have somebody there. And especially when you got somebody on your team that can come fight with you, you know what I'm saying? Somebody that can fight spiritually with you. Galatians 6 and 10, this is the Amplified version. So then while we are as individual believers have the opportunity, let us do good to all the people not only being helpful but also doing that which promotes their spiritual well-being especially being a blessing to those of the household of faith or born again believers so we got to understand see like in, as you see in this this clip right here you know he's fighting him with his armor and that's what you're supposed to do i mean think about it like you know like i was talking about even with uh, t'challa you know the black panther you know, even though he had the armor and all that, he still didn't fight by himself. Like, he still had those sisters that was fighting with him. Like, he still had people that was fighting with him. And we're not supposed to fight this fight by ourselves. You know, we need others that can, can help us or pinpoint us in the right direction or, you know what I'm saying? And that's why I says iron sharpens iron. It is not for us to be by ourselves. And that's one of the tricks in the enemy. You know, when people get in the church and somebody and they're affected by a person in the church, they call it church hurt. It's really not church hurt. It's the person that, that is hurting them. But actually, God told me to take it as an honor because you're supposed to pray for that person. You know, God wants to use them, but they are so blinded. But if you pray for them, God's word says whatever you do in secret, God rewards you openly. Ain't that what we supposed to do? I mean, wouldn't we want somebody that's blind to actually see? You know, some people are blind. They don't know it. You know, we talk about, you know, the Bible says, you know, stay sober minded. Some people are, you know, not just drunk off alcohol, but all types of things. They're drunk off of love. You know, that's why people stay in relationships longer than they should. Or some people die or whatever like that, because, you know, saying they think like, you know, um, you know, because because they're drunk and they're just, you know, and people have a good heart. and They try to stay longer than what they should. Proverbs three and twenty seven. It says, do not withhold good from those whom it is due when it is in your power to act. So that's saying that, you know, whatever the case is, you know, what I'm saying if there's good to be done, 
we should be able to to help somebody. We should be able to, you know what I'm saying, pray for some people. And sometimes you have to love people from a distance. And that's okay. You know, that person may have hurt you or said something. So therefore, you know, you just pray for them. You know, I said, I still speak to people. You know, there's people that, you know, I've been in several different churches, you know what I'm saying? And I've encountered several people different people, you know, saying with, with persecution and stuff like that, people that lied and said something. And, you know, God said, you know, could you go pray for him and stuff like that? And that's what I went home and did because, I mean, that's what it's about. I remember one time, you know, I didn't want to minister to uh, my enemies. Um, you know, like it's easy for me to forgive, you know, but I didn't want to minister to them, you know, because they had said some hurtful things, uh, talked about, you know, saying how my mom crying and stuff like that. And I remember, um, you know, I fought with God, you know what I'm saying? And I remember one day when I went back to college, you know what I'm saying? And my kids went with their mom, you know, and, and she moved out of town and everything like that. And, you know, I lasted 17 days. I said, God, you know, if you take this pain away, you know, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And I remember, you know, it wasn't the fact that, you know, I, I just felt like I felt like I lost, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I felt as a black father, you know what I'm saying? Like I felt, I'm like, man, look at all these, you know, like, you know, in the community, how some of these fathers are not taking their care of their kids. And I thought I felt my kids, but that was the shame and the guilt because I didn't understand that. Yeah, it was a fact that they left, but the truth was, you know, God was preparing me. And like the scripture says, you can't love your children more than you love God. And so, you know, but I, I told God on that, on the 17th, I said, God, if you take this pain away, whatever you, I said, if you take this pain away, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And I remember I got up and God said, go minister to your enemies. And, you know, um, and one of them end up, you know, because they were a temporary enemy and I know why, you know what I'm saying? But that's when God said, I can use you because it wasn't about me anymore. You know, the, the psalmist said, it's not about us. It's about Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Just like we see in this clip, you know, right here, like he understand the truth. Like after all that fighting and stuff like that, because when we cry, that's where, that's where all that anger and stuff gets out or that, that type of mindset. That's why we talk about ventilation and stuff like that. Like he really understood the truth and what he was fighting for, you know what I'm saying? And what he really wanted. Yes. He wanted justice and stuff like that, but that wasn't the right way to go about it. I mean, it didn't look, and then, and he still showed grace and mercy, you know, the same way God shows grace and mercy. Yes. We're supposed to show grace and mercy to our, you know, the people that we encounter, you know what I'm saying? Cause that's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, that's when, you know, that's when God used me and he said, you know what? I can use you now. And I'm like, okay, because now, you know, I got, I, you know, I got out of my emotions. I got out of my feelings and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Cause I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to minister to my enemies, but you know what I said? It's not about me. And even people that you know, act a certain way or whatever like that, I just pray for them. You know what I'm saying? You can love people from a distance. God didn't call us to like people. He called us to love people. That's what it is. You know, some people, I heard some people say, you know, you, you feed some people with a long handle spoon. And that's the truth. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we're here to help each other. That's why I say you got to stay armored up, man. I'm always ready. Like, I always got my armor, just like Superman. I always got my armor on. No matter what happens, when people say stuff or whatever, I stay with my armor. That's why I get prepared. You know what I'm saying? We have to prepare. That's what God wants to do. He wants us to prepare because at some time, life is going to hit us. Everybody, ask everybody. You know, people say stuff like, why do, you know, why do bad things happen to good people? Man, listen, things happen to everybody. They just don't talk about it. So we talking about a bad person and something bad happened. They don't be like, why do bad things happen back to bad people? You know, things can always happen. But understand this, life has never caught God by surprise. It will catch us by surprise. But that's why we have this this word, you know, so that's why we have this Bible so that we can prepare for this test because the, 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 uh, the test of life going to come. That's just say all the time, you know, how can you have a testimony without the test? And if and if the Bible is an open book test, then why aren't you studying? You can study 15 minutes a day. <laughs> Telling you, as Geico says, what, it'll save you on car insurance? Man, listen, it'll save you a lot of stress. I'm telling you. People always ask me all the time, they be like, man, how can I have the faith that you have, man? Listen, I spend time with God. I spend time with God. I'm telling you, when I read this word and when I look and I'm seeing, and that's why, like I said, with, with this clip in here, it's time to prepare, you know what I'm saying? And, and even that, you know what I'm saying? We're coming together. That's what we as a people need to do. I'm going to make another video about that. But, you know, just this one, you just got to stay armored up because, listen, life is going to hit you. But you got to be prepared, you know what I'm saying? Think about it. The enemy will always attack where there's no armor at. Sometimes, you know, we, you know, we get tired. Like I only want to wear three pieces. Well, that's where the attack is going to happen. The enemy wants to take you out, but you just got to get dressed and stay armored up. So I just want to tell y'all, I love y'all. God bless. 
I'm always here to pray for me and I'm praying for you.